morning, it's Clive from Outdoor here. I'm in Waltham on the Wolds, which is near Grantham. And today's walk I'm hoping to go up towards Beaver Castle and sort of walk around the grounds as much as you can. I'm not sure how that will work out. And then back. Um, temperature's changing, it's beginning to drop, so uh, I've wrapped up a little bit warmer today. I've got a Rab Microlite. They call it gilet. Posh word, isn't it? There you go. Gilet on, and uh, the nucleus pull-on. I'll tell you a bit more about the pull-on a bit later on. But it's the time of year when cold mornings, and not really too sure how the weather's going to turn out. Brought waterproof with me as well, just in case. But we'll see. So far, it's a beautiful morning, a beautiful day, and uh, it's a really attractive little village as well around here. So. Yeah, let's press on, let's see what it's like. First couple of miles of this walk have, have been along the road, which um, has been alright because they're not very busy roads, just a little bit more busy than country lanes, I suppose. But I've turned off now onto a bridle way and I'm heading in a easterly, easterly direction. Sounds very professional, doesn't it? It's quite a chill in the wind this morning. But when you're sheltered and out of the wind, the sun's uh, still quite warm. So I've taken my body warmer gilet off because I was getting a little bit hot. Because the top that I've got is what Rab calls thermic. So it's uh, it's a thermal mid layer, and uh, yeah, at the moment I feel quite comfortable. The, where I'm walking is up in the northeast corner of Leicestershire. So it's almost on the border, well it is on the borders of Lincolnshire. So around here the land is, let me see, is relatively flat. Um, I mean, north of Leicester. It's, it's much more hilly, you know, like Bradgate Park, Beacon Hill, all those sort of areas where there's all that kind of volcanic rock that sticks up. And hills. But along here, it's, uh, it's relatively flat walking. So I guess that's going to make it a fair bit easier. But it's a beautiful morning. It's a, it's a lazy morning. You know, nature just feels a bit quiet and subdued today, restful. seen such a massive collection of strawberries. This is an airfield or an old airfield. I think it's still in use. So I guess this is the runway. Whether it's an old military airfield or civilian, I really don't know. But I guess it's military. There's a lot of old airfields around this part of the world, deserted, I suppose because it's flat land, it's a good place to 
I've now come to the Viking Way, which is a long distance path and I've turned north and heading northwards. And I'm going to walk this until I get to a village called Wollstone by Beaver, which is near Beaver Castle. It's actually spelled Belvoir, which I think is French for beautiful view. But everybody in Leicester pronounces it as Beaver. And if you go Belvoir, they'll soon tell you off and put you right. Seems to be quite a lot of fruit on the bushes this year, which my mum says is the sign of a harsh winter. These are all slowberries. They make slowberry gin from. This must be the other end of the runway. You can see all those straw stacks in the distance. It looks like a pretty big gliding club here. It looks like it must be pretty active. I've never seen round bales this size before. Wee little things. This is the A607, so I'm a bit careful crossing over here. I think I must have been walking along the Leicester Lincolnshire boundary. Well, I guess now. I'm in Lincolnshire. just come to the end of the Viking Way and I'm going to turn left along the road to wherever it's called under Beaver, the village. And I think it's the Jubilee Way that I follow from then onwards. It's been quite a long trek along the Viking Way. The first bit of it was a bit uninspiring to be honest. It, uh, it's called the Drift and it's an area of special scientific interest. I'd imagine in the spring it's probably quite beautiful you know, because there's flowers and uh, wildlife there which would be really interesting. But this time of year it's just full of dead long brown stuff. The whole of the Viking Way along here has been a mud track and it's okay because it's really dry but I imagine in the winter it'd be, uh, be a nightmare to walk along. But there you go. Anyway, the last part of it has been quite beautiful. The, uh, the path either side has been loads of sweet chestnut trees. 
and they've been really nice colour and the ground's been covered in chestnut and uh, they're prickly shells, what do you call them? We'll keep them. So that bit was really nice, that bit. I enjoyed that. I'm going to head for, what is it called, Walden under Beaver, is it? Something like that. Um, I'll find somewhere to stop and have me lunch. Now I've reached the church of St James, which is in Wallsthorpe by Beaver. So it's quite a nice little village. Uh, but I'm going to stop here and have something to eat and drink. I think it's about two o'clock, so it's about time, isn't it? As I said earlier, at the beginning of the walk, I'm trying out Rab's nucleus pull-on top. Now this is a, a, a thermal top, a thermal layer, uh, mainly designed to be worn as a mid-layer, although you can wear it as a base layer, or as I'm doing most of today, you know, wear it as an outside layer. It is designed as a thermal layer, so it's uh, designed to keep you warm, and if you look on the inside, you can see that patterning. The idea of the patterning is that it, it keeps you, uh, catches the air in between all the sort of crisscrossy bits, and that helps to keep you warm. Now, it's not uh, windproof at all, um, so it is not designed for that. It is purely designed to maintain and keep your heat. It is mainly made from polyester but it's got uh, spandex in it so it has got a degree of stretch sorry steep my lunch so which is quite useful for some of us who have certain parts that require a little bit of stretch so the polyester and, and the spandex of this fabric is what they call a, a double knitted fabric it's designed to, to fit under your hard shell layer or whatever it may be. I've been wearing it today, found it very comfortable. I like the zip, so that gives you plenty of room ventilation if you need it, but if you want to keep warm, it's got a good high collar and there's a little chest pocket here, which personally, I don't know that I'd really want to put anything much in there, but anyway, perhaps you do, It'd be useful. My only kind of wish, I suppose, about it was I wish it was just a little bit longer. Well, that's, maybe that's a personal thing, you know, but I wish it was just a little bit longer to cover your hips a bit more. But apart from that, um, it's been good today. Kept me warm. I'm going to head to Beaver Castle now. That's my next. I'm leaving the village now and uh, my path that I take goes straight across country, across the fields I think and that takes me straight to Beaver Castle which I'm looking forward to seeing Looks pretty dramatic doesn't it sitting up there but you get a great view from the top this is the main entrance, visitor's entrance to Beaver Castle. I was kind of hoping I'd get a bit closer to be honest and see it, but it's all hidden behind those trees, which is a bit of a shame. But there we go, never mind. I think it's a major landmark around here. You can see it for miles. Uh, there was originally a castle here uh, in Norman times. That was the first one. And I think there have been something like five castles since then. And the current one 
was finished in 1832 and for quite a few hundred years it's been the home of the Manners family and the seat of the Duke of Rutland. Last time I was here uh, I was helping out with the uh, bonfire firework display which was pretty spectacular so it's been interesting to come back here again and have a look. There's an interesting story about the castle. In the 17th century, uh, the Duke of Rutland, his two sons, died, and two of the uh, female servants were accused of witchcraft. Um, one of them died in prison, and the other one got hanged. It's a good job times have changed, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> oh well. Never mind. So, yeah, I'm going to carry along along the road that sort of goes around the castle. Maybe I'll get a few more views of it, I hope so. And the grounds. And I'm heading back to where I started. I think this in front of us is the Vale of Beaver. I think these are still the grounds of the castle. Very impressive. I nearly got as far as the village of Branston. It's not quite spelt the same as the pickle. Most of the walk from Beaver Castle has been a long road, but it's been alright because uh, there's not much traffic comes along with it. Very little indeed, really. And uh, I really enjoyed, there's a lot of trees along the way and I really enjoyed um, watching the sun through the trees with their sort of semi-autumnal colours. It was very beautiful. So I've turned off now of the road and I'm following this track which it says is permissible track or pathway, whatever you call it. And this will take me to a village called Croxton. As you can probably see, the sun's quite low in the sky. It's about past four now, I think, which is later than I was intending. <laughs> Yet again! <laughs> but it's really peaceful and lovely. I am enjoying it. I like things here. Like all the different shades that it creates. Dark cloud, blue sky, brown, green land, all the different colours there are. It's very, very attractive, very, very appealing. back at Waltham on the, on the Wolds. It's not quite dark yet. I think there's something that appeals to the, the melancholic character in me that really enjoys finishing a walk this time of the day when it's you know, beginning to get a bit darker. It's been a gentle walk very unpretentious. There's no great landmarks here or things of particular interest except Beaver Castle and you can't get anywhere near that so all you get is a dramatic silhouette on the skyline. But if you love the British countryside or the English countryside then walks around this area definitely are very worthwhile. It has its own uh, quiet beauty and I think what I've enjoyed about the walk is the restfulness and quietness even if it has been a bit of a long one but there we are 
So, yeah, if you like simple English countryside, then I recommend walking around here, around this part of the land. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. And hopefully I will see you again.